we we repeat the question, please. Yeah, I have sent you a letter. I have sent you a question about the this the letter that we have from Ray. His last I can't say his last name, but it's a letter just basically uh, detailing that he had um that he that he had sent to uh, the IRS uh, requesting to empty out his accounts for any uh, past years of tax uh, filings that he had. That they would have asking for a refund of all his income tax. Right. As far as I know, he hasn't gotten many results on that. Gotcha. Pretty good language in there, though. I like the language. Right, right. Well, I've, I've, I've gotten news that the uh, six set-offs I did didn't take effect. Uh, I've, I've only talked to one of them. I will go back against the other five and see what excuses they offer. But uh, I, I, I need to go over the call uh, early. I, I, I tried to do it today, but we had trouble with the transcript trans, trans, trans call. And it's not quite correct now. <laughs> But uh, the, the last call was, was very compact. This is Jahari calling from Chicago. Yes. Good evening, Jahari. Peace, peace and blessings, family. Peace. Thank you. How you doing, Tom? Pretty good. Wonderful. How's the family? Excellent. Good. Good, busy. Okay. Doing good. Everything. So uh, I need to redo my uh, set-offs in, with the new material in in this uh, call. Right. Even, the, even though the call was, was very thorough about things, he talked about a lot of things uh, 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 that has to refer back to previous things. So it's a process of going through the call carefully and then going back to each document and, and getting it organized the way you want. He, he covers an awful lot of. Yeah, it, it, it's it's pretty succinct now. I mean, it's pretty tight. I I don't see how you could miss. Mm. Now, I, I mean, I didn't send the, the when I did send my set offs in previously. I didn't have the the banker oh. EIN, so mm. that that was a that was a you know that was a, a setback there, but. Now I got everything. Now we we ready to rock and roll. So it's it, it, I'm almost certain. I already contacted the dealer today. I feel so confident. So, oh, good. Okay. Yeah. Hey Tom, All I got right. a question. Yeah. If you clear this up, um, when Patrick's talking about flipping over the the bill or the voucher, or whatever, and uh, endorsing the back, is he still making a money order out of that, or are you just signing it? And then putting your uh, he he has bank. examples he has examples up there. You're doing it as an endorsement, but also filling it out with a negative value because you want credits, not not debt. All right, so we're gonna make a the amount of the bill, flip it over, endorse it, and put underneath of it your bank and your EIN number, correct? I'd have to get my my sample. I see exactly how I do it. If you want, I'll do it. Okay, I'm online, Tom. Hi, Patrick. We got the recording going. Thank you. Okay. Now, I don't know whether anybody else has had any response back uh, this week, but Verdell uh, basically had, okay, and uh, she uh, had picked up her car, uh Car dealership uh, called her up and said, "Hey, uh, we've got uh, basically the payment," uh, uh, and she wasn't expecting uh, them to uh, call her up about the car right away. Okay, so it was uh, faster than what uh, she'd expected. So basically, she went down there, picked up the car, they gave her both set of keys, 
They gave her the manufacturer's title and everything, and uh, she drove away with it. Well, then about a day or two later, uh, they came and called her and said she had to come back down there to the car dealership uh, because of uh, 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 the odometer uh, certificate. They had to update that. And uh, so what they were doing was getting her back down there so that they could take the car back away from her. Right. They had uh, the sheriff's department there uh, to uh, uh, basically uh, impound the car. Uh, She had all of her documents in the growth compartment. Okay. You don't do that. Okay. You get those documents, you take those out. If anything you keep in the car after you get it, you put a copy of those into the car. Hmm. You keep the originals in your private possession. Okay, that's what I've got. I've got the originals in my private possession. I have copies in my glove compartment on the car. But I purchased mine outright with my debit card after the funds were transferred into my debit card from the Social Security Administration. Now, this was money that they owed me because of usage of basically my account. Well, that's the same scenario that's going on right now, okay? In this process, we're just transferring funds from our, and the Social Security system is nothing more than the independent treasury that was set up in the 1920s. That's all the Social Security is. It's the independent treasury. They transferred funds from our uh, inheritance, our birth certificate, into this independent treasury to operate out here. The Social Security number is nothing more than a independent bank routing number. It has dashes in it. It can move around. It's that simple. If it has a dash in it, it can move. It can run a race. Okay? When it has no dashes, it's permanently fixed. And that's what our exemption number is. Our Social Security, when you take the dashes out, that is our Mortimane account. He can't run any dashes. He's fixed. He's dead. He's sitting there in a state of morbidness. That's why he's called a Mortimane. Okay? He's a dead issue, a dead hand. Okay. The Pirates of the Caribbean. Basically, the the chest, the dead chest. Cortez's treasury. Cortez was dead. All those people, basically, that uh, had taken the gold, basically, they were essentially dead. The Pirates of the Caribbean movie had a lot of interesting stuff in it. Now, according to Chris, okay, and when I think back on this, uh, this does make some sense, especially when you know the landscape of the pyramids and everything else that were going on throughout history from the Polynesians from the uh, Egyptians, from the pyramid that they find in China, from the pyramids that they find in uh, Bosnia, all over the world. I'm listening. Well, supposedly there is a great city in the Caribbean under water, a pyramid city. That makes all the sense in the world why 
Christopher Columbus was going to the Caribbean and not going to mainland America. Someone's got their speaker on or basically talking in the background. Yeah, that's, I'm already about to ready to use the mouse. Star six and mute yourself out, please. Okay. Yep. The other one of the other accessing points that I know of basically was in Philadelphia to the underground depository account, A-R-Y. The Western Depository was initially in Cairo, Illinois. It was moved out of there because of the Madrian Fault caused a earthquake that basically filled up the tunnels to the underground, and it was replaced by accessing through Springfield, Missouri. Hmm. All of this stuff is basically fits right in with the National Treasure uh, movies, the two of them, that were out here. A lot of this stuff has all been told about in the movies. Now, one of the key things is with Verdell, it was the bank that basically was denying the processing of the funds. There was nothing wrong with the instrument that she did. They said that. But they said, well, we have to go to uh, the Federal Reserve Bank in New York to do this, and we're not going to go to the Federal Reserve Bank in New York. Well, that's total bullshit. Those Federal Reserve Banks can deal with one another. You have a problem when you send something out, either to the court, when you get the documents in, you find out what the bond is, and you turn around and do a set-off for that bond using the SF-25 form, the SF-24, 25, and 25A, whichever one's the appropriate one to use, And if they do not process it, who do you go to see? You go to the Social Security Inspector General. He is the Treasury Inspector General for the Independent Treasury, which is the Social Security. The Social Security is basically the independent treasury in this country. The commercial independent treasury. And you claim fraud that they are not processing your negotiable instrument. You also inform the CID or the IRS commissioner or counsel. We've had, I've had all of these fax numbers and phone numbers, and the Social Security uh, Inspector General has a phone number, a hotline. Why is it called a hotline? So that you can get your complaint right in there. They responded very fast on my problem with the Social Security system. One of the other guys, they were taking out taxes out of his Social Security. He put a call into the Social Security Inspector General and basically it stopped and the payments, the money that they had taken out was returned to him into his direct express card. I said this on several calls now. Right. You guys have to listen to these calls and understand what I'm saying. 
The information is all right here. None of these forms are all that damn hard to fill out. But if you need help, go ask the IRS. Ask somebody. You don't have to call and ask me. I've given you all the information that I can give you. You've got to think these things true. You make a mistake, ask them, well, what mistake did I make? Now, in a lot of cases, these utility companies and stuff like that, they're going to balk at this because they've been too accustomed to doing it the other way, and they think that's the only way that it's to be done. They don't know this other way. This is this system is almost a hundred years old. Basically, the ones that started out with it that understood what was going on, they're no longer there. And they haven't taught their replacements what the true process is. You have to fight to get your resolve. It's not going to come handed right to you. You do need your banker's your individual banker's EIN number. And in most cases, the ones, the people that got that, it was a 47 number. Forty-seven stands for being independent. Four and seven together equals eleven. Your birth certificate registration number is an eleven digit number. That's an independent account. Independent inheritance account. But they move funds out of that over into the commercial Mortimain account. So that these corporations could basically access using your Social Security bank, treasury bank, routing number, because it's got dashes in it, then they could put a lien against your Mortimain account. You can either go and have the funds transferred to the others and be prepared that you're going to have to go through the process of them denying you the utility company or whatever, because they don't know the damn system. They don't know about negotiable instruments. Even half the banks don't even understand negotiable instruments. Hmm. Unless they see a check that they issue out in their own name or from some other public bank. They don't know that anybody else can issue a negotiable instrument. And they don't want competition. So they will try and make it as hard as possible. You've got to be able to stand your ground and fight back by using the appropriate personnel to do the fighting for you. The Social Security Inspector General, the CID of the IRS, the IRS Commissioner.
You complain, even to your local Social Security office or your local IRS office. Say, what is wrong with this instrument? Hell, it was processed by the IRS, so there must not be anything wrong with it. That's if you do it to where you're making the thing out to the third party. You make the negative value out to the treasury. You have to bring the credits out of your account, turn them over to the treasury. The treasury will turn around and send a positive value over to the other party. Mm-hmm. Even when you do it to yourself, okay, and have it put into your debit card, you make the negative value to the treasury on your negotiable instrument with the payment from the treasury to you as the payee. <laughs> Your Marta main account is the payor, paying it over to the treasury. <clears throat> In some cases, you might be better off to have it processed into your hands first. Then from there, you can turn around and Go and purchase the house. Purchase the vehicle. Pay the bills. Makes sense. The one thing you need to do, first off, is get all your bills paid. Get all bonds settled. You have a piece of property that you own. The state has a certificate of title issued to you on that. You need to go in and settle the bond that is tied to that certificate of title. Your vehicle, the same way. You've got to settle the bond and get those out of your hair first. I put those documents up there for Tom, and Tom posted them, okay, about the uh, court cases using the uh, 273, 274, and 275. And then we, on the other side, we use the 24, the 25, the 25A, and the 25B. The 25B basically is a continuation sheet for the other three. Hmm. Look at them. Don't give me whom. You should have looked at these things. Yes, I posted the I posted those forms up in the folder. Yeah, but just posting them, don't. Right, we have to all look at them. You yeah. got to look at them. You got to understand them. Yes, I've been looking through them. I'm I not going to sit them. here and I'm not going to fill out every damn thing and can feed you any people anymore. I've given you everything that I can. I didn't put if you can't out. handle it from here on out, you're never going to handle being an independent person. Because you will totally screw it up and you'll be right back in the slammer somehow or other. You've got to get the understanding. You've got to do this yourself from now on. And it's not that hard. That's the kicker. It's not that damn hard, people. You just got to do it.
If you're afraid to do it, then basically just leave, okay? And just write it out, whatever you want to do, okay? Continue to be a baby in Babylon, in Babylon land. <laughs> There's books out here on Babylon all over the place. Most of the writers have totally screwed it up in their understanding about what Babylon was all about. Just like they screwed up the Bible, thinking that they know everything about the Bible. Hell, it's right in Daniel that basically Daniel stood his ground. We do an affidavit as to living. We put it in through our individual banker or independent banker, and we can use that private substitute IRS W8BN. Our individual banker is also going to be the fiduciary agent because our private bank is the fiduciary over our estate, over our foreign grant or trust accounts, and also over our motor main account. And as the fiduciary agent, he can also be the attorney in fact. Now Patrick Devine can go into any public court as the independent banker, fiduciary, and attorney in fact representing my Social Security person that is always the one that's being charged in any court action. Until we totally liquidate that Social Security motor main account. Then the state has no jurisdiction over us in any manner. Just like the state has no jurisdiction over the automobile that I'm driving. Because it's not registered to them. Even Ford Motor Company doesn't have any jurisdiction over that car. I waived all warranties. I signed a document. Now, Ford, the dealership, had to get that signed document back to Ford Motor Company Financial uh, Credit Union. See, the car dealership did not own that vehicle. Ford Motor Company Credit Union owned, owned that vehicle that I bought. The car dealership is just a agent, like an insurance agent, working for an insurance company. These car dealerships are all working for Ford Motor Company, Chrysler, GM, whatever, Jeep, you name it. They don't own the vehicles. They're just processing agents. They wouldn't have the funds to buy the vehicles anyway. That Ford Motor Company and GM and Chrysler and all them, yeah, they're giving funds, direct access to the Social Security Independent Treasury to write the bonds out there by way of trade acceptances with the Federal Reserve against the Treasury. 
Doctor, can I ask you a question? Yeah. All right, um, you're talking about if you go right down to Ford dealership and buy it from them, that Ford Motor Credit has a thing. What what if uh, you went down and you went through another uh, a separate bank? Would the um, Treasury or the uh, Federal Bank hold that, the uh, ownership on that car? A brand new one? Well, was, uh, say it's a 2013 used car. And I contract. Why do you want to buy a used car? Which isn't Dodge. It's car for by itself. Why do you want to buy a used car? No, I already did. I already bought it. I'm just trying to figure out where the title might be. Would it be at through Dodge or is it going to be at the Federal Reserve Bank? Did you buy it outright or did you buy it with a loan from the bank? I financed it. Yeah. The bank has a bond. You've got to go in and get the bond that you placed on file with that bank. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you. Yeah, see, that's all that this is. When you're dealing with the banks, the banks don't have any money. So what they do? They bonded it. They wrote a bond. You have to get in and settle the bond. Transfer the funds from your motor main account to set the bond off using the SF-24 or 25A, I think it is. <laughs> and the 1099A, and uh, process it against your motor main account. <laughs> you use your bank routing number, which is your QCIP number, which is your Social Security number. See, it's got a lot of different terminology for that Social Security number. A QCIP number is nothing more than a bank routing number or a treasury routing number. It can run the race. Now, our exemption or our auto trust number does not have any dashes, and that's where the funds are being held at. Our exemption, our credits. And in this process right now, it's almost unlimited. Just about like in the movie, uh, Jupiter Ascending. She was an owner of the whole earth. You are too. So you have access to basically the whole earth supply. Hmm. But was she going to abuse it? No. And they won't let you abuse it either. You use it appropriately, and basically, you'll be able to operate when you understand what's going on. You'll be like Daniel when he came out of the system in Babylon. And he had this proper standing. We are an exempt. We are we have an exempt status in comparison to the Constitution and the statutes. We are exempt from them. The Constitution and the statutes only apply to corporations. That's basically what the Bill of Rights was addressing. They were pointing out our exemptions, our items that we stand exempt. We have never turned over to the government. 
They were pointing out our exempt status, our powers that we have, that the cost that the corporations cannot infringe upon. I don't think I really need to go over the 1099-As or anything like that. You can fill them out appropriately, either to yourself, okay, by the way, and I'd recommend if you're going to make it out to yourself as being the borrower, you use your estate, E-I-N, as the borrower in the process. And then hand it over to your individual banker, and your individual banker, now, you have to have your Form 56 over your uh, Social Security and uh, Mortimane, your QSIP, and uh, other. So basically, uh, on the Form 56, it's got two numbers up there at the top. It's got the Social Security number, and then basically it's got another number right in front of that. That other number right in front of it, is going to be your Social Security without the dashes. I went over that before. At least I thought I did. And see, you are exempt. And when your estate and your foreign grant or trust are working for your private bank, and your private bank is a non-profit bank, there is no taxes due on either one of those EINs. You're not operating for profit. You're not operating in usury. You're only pulling your funds out that are there. The usury account is the Social Security account and the Mortimain. If the IRS comes and says the Social Security person owes some taxes, give it to them. You've got unlimited resources. It's no sweat off your butt. Ask them, what do I need to do to set this thing off? I think I need to do a 1099-A. I think I need to do a voucher, give you the negative credits against this account. Here's my exemption account number. Hmm. My QSIP and my auto trust number. Just like that one document said. When you use those two terms, Basically, the court turns around and really looks at you in an entirely different light. Because you're now you're operating with the documents or with the account numbers that they need to see to settle their bonds. Okay, any questions now? Yeah, just for clarity, Pat. She tried to finance the vehicle? She didn't buy it outright? No, she was not financing it. She was buying it outright. The bank would not process the check that basically was coming in or the transfer of the funds that were being sent over to them they said, well, we have to go to the Federal Reserve Bank in New York, and we're not going to do that, which is total bullshit. That is totally going against the negotiable instrument process. There was nothing wrong. They couldn't arrest her for that negotiable instrument. They said there was nothing wrong with it. 
They just weren't going to process it. Well, see, that is outright fraud. So who do you get in touch with? The Social Security. Because it's coming from the Social Security account. So you go to the Social Security Inspector General and put the claim in. The fraud. Gotcha. Let them go after that bank. And they will. Big time. She didn't have any issues with the other purchases, right? Huh? She didn't have any other issues with the other purchases. She still got the house that she basically put, put one in for 171000 now she hasn't got the one for thirty five thousand to transfer into her account yet. She's still waiting on that one. Hey. Yeah. It's good stuff, man. <laughs> Patrick, I have a question. Huh? Uh, in regards to what you were just talking about, will you go in and get all the courts, get the bonds, and uh offset them or discharge them? Can you uh once that's done, can you go back and do the receipt on them that you were talking about? What no, if you uh, if you settle the bonds, okay. Right. Okay, now you need to understand. Like my traffic tickets that I had, okay, they had an appearance bond on there. The appearance bond was like for 600 some dollars on one of them. The traffic charges... Okay, the charges against that, state charges, were 500 some. Okay? Okay. And see, I tried to address this into the court. I said, I'm here to pick up my appearance bond. Settle the matter and basically uh, set this thing off. Well, I didn't have all the right information at the time. And I didn't have my power because I was coming in there as the living person. I didn't have my individual banker and him being the fiduciary and also my attorney in fact. See, they can only hear an attorney in court. It doesn't have to be an attorney at law. An attorney at law has to have a license. You don't need a license if you're an attorney in fact. Okay, but right. you can be your own attorney. Your fictional person is going to be your attorney. Because that's all that those other attorneys are. They're just fictional. They will not leave that fictionary capacity. They will never stand in the living capacity in that court. All right, so that's why they can to... never do an affidavit. So if I got a court case, I just go in as a fiduciary and I can uh, do the GSA, the 25A? You need to have them give you the bond. You need to have the bond. Right. Then you take the bond, and then from the bond, you should be able to put the information upon the 25A form, and also possibly even the 1099B form. Gotcha. See, we can't do the 1099Bs until we get a bond, until we get all the information that goes on that 1099B. All right, so we're going to bar barter the charge. Right. The, You're going to barter, barter the, the credits. 5A, right? Huh? That was taking place. We're actually bartering, bartering the charge yeah. against the 25A. Yeah, you did bartering the credits to set okay. off the debt. I got you. You see, take a look at the 1099B and the SF 25A. More than likely, you're going to see a lot of similarities between the two. I have noticed that. Yes. All right. Thank you. Okay. Hmm. 
Patrick? Yeah. Some of my uh, my six set offs didn't work to the utility companies. I, I could go back. They did. And, uh, you just didn't process it. You need to file a complaint in there, basically find out why didn't it go through, and then right. put a complaint in with the Social Security Inspector General. That's what I was going to ask, yes. But should I even bother going through and, and doing the revision on it by sending the uh, lender's copy? You need to all? take a look at it. Does it need to be? Did you miss something? Or was it good enough the way it was? Okay. Okay. But you, you gave us a question. I can't I tell you saying. whether it, you've got to make that determination. You, you had added the uh, factor where we could send the lender's copy to Ogden. And should I try that first or try them both? It's up to you, Tom. Okay. You make the call. I'm not going to make the call for you. I told you, I'm not going to tell you guys anymore what you need to do. I've told you everything that's out here that needs to be done. Now you guys have to make up your own mind. Okay? That's what freedom of choice is all about. Freedom. You have the freedom. You want to be in baby lawn? Then let somebody else tell you what to do. But I'm not going to be the one that's going to be a baby master. I never did like changing diapers. One thing would be helpful, though, Pat, is, is uh, a, at least uh, an idea of how this uh, negotiable instrument should look in terms of the, the elements that should be on it. There's more than enough information out there. I've done this for about four or five years, negotiable instruments in just about every capacity, and there was nothing wrong with basically too many of them, okay? okay. The only thing you need on the negotiable instrument is a bank routing number. That's your social security number. Your account number. And that is your auto trust number. That is your uh, social security number without the dashes. What more do you need? Say no more. You need an authorized representative. Who's the authorized representative? Basically, your individual banker. He's the fiduciary. Bank, so, anything you write up, there's more information out there on negotiable instruments all over the website. Okay. But I've got a whole bunch of them in my files that are on We the People, and Tom's got some of them over on uh, that E Concurrent. So they're there too. Other people have done slightly different ones. You don't need to have an uh, uh, apostille. You don't need to have a UCC. You don't need any of that stuff. Some people still think you need to have all this stuff. Well, that's their thought. My thought is you don't need it. Because, basically, you didn't need it when you first started out. Mm -hmm. You've been doing all this stuff ever since, basically, you turned 16 out here and started, or basically when you uh, got your learner's permit or whatever, with the damn automobiles. But, basically, they've been using your account ever since you went into grade school. Or kindergarten. Because they put you into the public system at that point in time. Utilizing your account. The school system. We're writing bonds against you from that time on. They were placing you in bondage. Uh, 
Hi, Patrick. Um, on the 1099A, the box where you check if you uh, the borrower's got to pay it back or not, when you check right. that, is is that what causes the money to be released? Is that is that the like the order? No, no. That's only if basically they have to pay that back, and in most cases, that's not going to be checked. They don't have to pay that back. See, this is also used uh, by the banks and everything else. Okay. Right. And they turn around and market saying, you as the debtor have to pay them back. But when we use it, we don't need to mark that box because we're releasing it over to them, the credits or whatever. Even on the 1099C, if we forgive a debt, All right, I think I'm following you. Yeah, say that basically the court refuses to give you the bond. Then you cancel the debt. You do a 1099-C and say, okay, you don't give me the bond. There is no bond. I'm canceling this debt. You inform the IRS that basically you canceled the debt, that basically that bond was out there. Now the IRS can go after them if any taxes are due. But you're out of the picture. Okay. Is that's where you put use yourself, your Mortimate account as the lender, and then your the, your banker, the fiduciary as the borrower, you would not check that. You yeah, to- you don't check it. You're not going to have to pay your Mortimer main account back. Why would you want to do that? No, I, I'm, I'm agreeing. That's what I'm saying. And then on the court, you would put the court as the lender, you as the borrower, and you still not check it. The court is never the lender. Right, your Mortimer main account is always the lender. Though. Is that correct? That's right. Okay, I got you. You're releasing the credits to settle their bond. Okay. I got you. I was just wondering how that had to come into play. I follow you now. Okay. Makes sense. See, in this country, this country was founded upon we the people being the private bankers. But they never told anybody that they were a private banker. Well, so we let these commercial bankers, we let these commercial bankers come in and replace us in the process. We don't need these commercial bankers. And see, that's what they're scared of. They, some of these banks know that basically as soon as the people start waking up, they aren't going to be needed. They're going to lose their power. That's why they're going to balk at some of this stuff. And see, that's what Vidal found out. One bank is reneging. The other bank accepted So if you deal with Wells Fargo, be prepared that they're going to renege. So we report them. And that's the car. That's the that's the dealership's bank, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Hello, Pat. Yeah. I have a question for you. Someone uh, such as myself 
is um, kind of coming into this brand new. How do I go about getting in contact with someone who can kind of not hold my hand but just walk me through the steps? I have um, three cases filed in federal court. So I'm not afraid to uh, venture out and try things, but the process is very confusing. And like I said, someone such as myself that just needs just a little bit of guidance, because I understand you could probably be repeating yourself for 20 to 30 years, but I'm trying to just get in touch with someone who can kind of walk me through the process, and after that, I got it. What do you have in federal court? Well, actually, I have... um, a case against the, the company I work for, they turned my property over to the IRS based on a notice of levy. And I also have a case filed against the IRS for filing a notice of a fraudulent notice of levy and a fraudulent notice of federal tax lien. These cases are both 13 months old, and, I, I again, I'm in court by myself. And I've been handling myself and uh, doing well okay in the, in the, in the courtroom. But no, you're not again, doing well. Too- you're not doing well, okay? Okay, I'm listening. Yeah, they're not hearing you, okay? You're in there. You don't have an attorney, do you? No, I don't. No. And you're not an attorney in fact. You're not a fiction. You're trying to come in there as the living person. Correct. You can't be in that court. All these courts are commercial. You've got to have a fictionary person in that court. You've got to have your individual banker be in that court. But then, why are you arguing the situation? Why are you not coming in there to settle? Well, the, the problem is I don't know the process to settle. and that, that's, that's, that's right. Okay, point. and that's what I'm trying to tell you. You turn around and you settle. You go in there and say, hey, I'm here to settle. I need the bond for this court case. And basically, I need to settle this bond. Here's my uh, my QCIP number and my auto trist number. Read the documents that I posted up here just recently. I had Tom post up recently. You're here to settle. When I went into court, okay, I demanded a trial jury court. Well, they were going to give me a trial court. Okay? And they had basically... Uh, they called a meeting uh, in the court, and they were going to get it set up, okay? Well, I turned the tables on them. I came in there and said, "Uh uh-uh, forget the trial. I want to settle. Let's settle this. As soon as I said that, basically, that thing came to a standstill. I didn't know how to settle it properly, (laughs) but basically, it brought that whole scenario to a standstill. I didn't know that I needed the bond. I did know that I had the bond, and I was trying to get the bond to settle, the appearance bond that was on the traffic tickets. But I didn't know that I had to do an SF-25 and basically process those through for settlement. Then I would have walked out of there with uh, shit. Three or four hundred dollars in my back pocket. Wow. So in, in my case, Pat, um, the first case I filed, I filed um, in the amount of one point two million. The second case is four hundred seventy-eight thousand, and the third case against the IRS, I'm going to go back in a minute complaint and file a two million dollar lawsuit based on what they did. Can you or are you able to get me in touch with someone who can just walk me through the process? Again, I'm not afraid to go in and do everything myself. You forget those court cases, okay? You want funds, okay? You go and put a charge in against uh, a 1099A and a negotiable instrument through the IRS against your motor main account. You don't go to court. The court ain't going to give anything to you. Gotcha. So can you get okay. me in touch with someone who has the time to walk me through or help me with that You process? need to listen to these calls that I have and okay. sit down and look at some of this paperwork <clears throat> and go over it and then possibly get on the group site, okay, the We the People, and put your questions in to some of the other people on the group or to get in touch with Tom 
for some of the Skype uh, calls and groups that are out there. Okay, got you. That's yeah. what I do yeah. first thing okay. tomorrow morning. I get on the We The People site, and I'll just start, you know, posing questions to see if anybody can help me. Yes, yeah. join, join the We The People Yahoo group. And when you should get the welcome email, it will tell you how to how to get the files and the calls and how to join the Skype group. Gotcha. Okay. First thing tomorrow morning. Thanks. Thank you, guys. And I'm 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 gonna mute the call and I'm just gonna continue to listen. But I will go to uh, We the People site tomorrow and just figure it out. Thank you, guys. A lot. Yeah. Appreciate it. Okay. And basically, one of the things, put a call out and see if there's anybody else in your local area. Okay. At one point in time, there was well over 2,000 people uh, on the We the People, or somewhere close to that. So you divide that by 50, uh, New York, 2,000. So basically, there should be about, uh, say, about 40 people in each state. Okay. I copy. I got you, Tom, and I, I'm, I'm going to mute right now and keep listening. And thank you guys for that. And I, and that's first thing tomorrow. First order of business tomorrow morning. That's what I'll be doing. Thank you. Okay. All right. Anybody else? I'm still having problems with the getting the 98 number. Is there anybody can help me with that? I know you told me to read the back of the form. Um, I did, but man, I'm fine. Read it about a non. I mean, I about hate... a foreign grant or trust, okay? And you're not necessarily don't need a 98 number, okay? But basically. It's not that hard to get that 98. Ask the people on the call or basically ask the people that are on uh, the Skype group or Thomas put a couple audios out there about conference calls going over the 98 or going over the SS4s in the process. Tom, you can tell him where those are located. I, I don't... I don't remember exactly where we did that, but we could do another one. Yeah, but you got them posted in the conference calls on eConcurrent, don't you? Yeah, so we don't. Not on the uh, not uh, on the uh, Sunday and Monday or Sunday and Wednesday night, but you have some other calls there uh, going over the ninety-eight or going over the SS four. Yeah, so we don't uh, list them by subject matter. We only list them by dates, but we probably should list them by subject matter. So. Yeah. I would I would do another call. It took us about an hour. Yes, that would be great. Listen to them by subject matter. matter. That would be a big help. Yeah, they're there. Uh, basically, if you look, uh, he's got them down there for uh, the, like the Wednesday and uh, uh, the Sunday night calls. And so, basically, if there's something, there's there's a call in between there that appears to be looking different. More than likely, that's one of the SS four calls. Right, right, right. That's right. Go, go, go. Inspect the dates. That's a good idea. Yeah. But uh, Thomas, can I call? I mean, let me ask you a question. while you on here now? About the SS four that that you posted uh, for the third party uh, designee. Uh, my my question is for line four A and four B. Was that for for uh, for the legal entity or was that for the uh, third party? You don't need a third party if you're going to do it uh, online. Oh, you can't do a foreign run a trust online. Yes, you can. You can. That's why you got to listen to the audio. And basically, Tom went through that with several people there a couple months back. Like, see, 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 Patrick, if, if I'd known that, I wouldn't be on the call asking right now about it. I mean, I had never known you could do a, a 98 uh, phone running trust number online. Yeah, he went. Basically, I, they were all done online, okay? Some of these people have done everything online now. Okay, what did I get? All right, all right, I understand. Uh-huh. Oh, wow. Okay. 
Okay. What do you mean everywhere you go? I'm not following you. Oh. Hey, Patrick, I'd like to thank you for the, the information you gave me tonight and the questions I asked. It helped me a lot and it filled in a lot of the blanks. Okay. I appreciate it. You're welcome. All this stuff is not really that hard, okay? We just make it hard on ourselves because we're scared and uh, we just don't quite understand and we don't take the time to read the instructions, okay? That's just like putting a model boat together, okay? We make it a lot harder than what it is. If you read the instructions, putting the model boat together turns out to be pretty easy. Unless you find out you've got missing parts. Right. I mean, like, I've been at this a while, and I've come across a lot of information, and a lot of it's just a bunch of bull. Right. I always knew you had to back them in a corner, and I believe that you're, what you found is what really does it. Yeah, as soon as we stop fighting with them, okay, yeah. and see, we've got an exemption account. We've got unlimited uh, credits. we got the full phase of credit of the country behind us. We don't need to have the Secretary of State tell us we've got the full faith and credit. We already have the full faith and credit based upon the Constitution. The corporation has to give us the full faith and credit. Right. Because we, the people, own the country. The corporations don't own this damn country. We do. They can't take our powers and our rights away from us. That's called out in the Ninth and Tenth Amendment to the Constitution. We have to voluntarily give up those rights and powers. Right. And we can stop volunteering any time, just like the people in the service. Basically, from the 14th Amendment on, don't even apply to us. Basically, none of it applies to us that is out there for a corporation. The whole Constitution is for a corporation. You're right. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Yeah. We're an ambassador. That's why if they see they want to try us, they have to take us into an Article Three court. And then if it's going to be a criminal charge against the living, it has to be in front of a grand jury to produce the indictment to start off with. Right. But see, if it's it's going against the Social Security person, they don't need a grand jury. Right, it's all fiction. Yeah. It's all corporation, commercial law. And see, they can't go out. You have to volunteer to go in and be the surety for the fictional person. And then you go in and you dishonor. First thing you do is dishonor the whole damn process. I know that too well. Yeah, and basically what they do when you dishonor. Contempt of court. And see, one of the other things basically is the living Basically, the living can always purge themselves of any contempt. How do you purge yourself? You settle the bill. You settle the bond that they have. That's what everyone's been missing. 
Yeah, see, that is your settlement in a purging. You purge the bond. And see, we stand by Christ, okay, in our endeavor in the private. Christ is the real law cast in iron. Christ has risen, okay? Mm -hmm. If you understand this, you have just resurrected Christ, the law, because that's all Christ was. Jesus was a man of law, Christ. That's why they call him Jesus Christ. That's why basically they call, uh, let's see, normally in Roman, in Latin, okay, and in some of the other languages, basically you have to flip the words around, put Christ, Jesus, then it's attorney. Jesus, or lawyer Jesus. They use metaphors throughout the Bible in a lot of this process. People don't understand the metaphors. They're trying to think about common place right now and not seeing the metaphors that were being used 2,000 years ago. Exactly. And not seeing the correlation in between the two of them. That's why I tried to give you the the metaphor about the dashes. A number that has dashes can run a race. A number that doesn't have dashes can't run. Right. Simple That's metaphor. Say for all the garbage that people out there tell them about, if it don't line up with the Bible, I can usually kick it out. Yeah. But see, the Bible is nothing but a book of banking laws. It has nothing to do with religion. Right. But banking laws is a religion in a way. It's a belief system. And that's all religion is, is a belief. You've got to have belief that you are a private banker and that you have powers over all the public bankers. <clears throat> Just don't abuse them. Okay. Once again, thanks for your input. Okay. Anybody else have any questions? Comments? Rebuttals? Okay. okay. Call tonight, Tom. Hey, Patrick, Patrick thanks Patrick. for uh, telling us about the SF-25A and how to settle the bonds. That was important. Yeah. Well, it's basically in that one document, that four-page document there. Right. That I made out of Rev 1 or Rev 2, I forget what it was, that I sent to Tom right. on that, that I put highlights in there trying to address that to where the federal courts uh we know they use the uh, SF-273, 274, and 275 in their bonding process. And then uh, at the state level, basically the appearance bonds and everything. And see, in a lot of cases, those appearance bonds are going through the state insurance commission. So you turn around and use the SF-23 uh, or 24, 25, 25A to uh, bring those in the closure. 
And then also with the banks, the same thing for a mortgage, okay? Right. And I think it's the 25A is the payment one. Okay. Good. I'll check out. I'll I'll look it over some more and get okay. get up on it. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Anybody else? Okay, Tom. Call tonight. Thank you very much, Patrick. Okay. Later. Sure.